Hi everyone, thank you for joining ETV and the Arts Council for our Meet the Artist series. I'm Jim Zielinski, the Communications Director for the Arts Council. What does the word jazz mean to you? Do you know how jazz is different than country, classical, and other styles of music? Well, today as our guest, we have many of the people from the Tennessee Valley Jazz Society, including Charlotte Grable, who is the Society's Jazz Education Coordinator, and some more very talented musicians, and I say more because she's going to be playing too, uh, who will discuss the educational and entertainment value of jazz in your life and in your schools. Now, Charlotte, would you like to take a moment and uh, just mention who all is going to be on here? You can introduce Steve and just mention the other musicians we'll have. Well, sure. Um, to my right here is Steve Most, our saxophone player. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, out here in this area, we have Ronnell Johnson on piano, and Devere Pride on bass, and Dennis Dunn on drums. Okay. Uh, Steve, um, why don't you tell our audience the members of the fifth grade classes that are watching us, uh, just a little bit about jazz, like when and where did it start? Well, jazz uh, uh, is, is an art form that, that actually this country developed, one of the first art forms and the art form that, that our country can claim as its own. The roots of it really began in the cotton fields with the spirituals from the slaves, grew into blues, in, in gospel, and from that, kind of just developed into into an improvisational art form. Uh, uh, when you listen to jazz, there are certain forms that are followed, but the musicians are at the liberty to tell you their story through their instrument the best that they can. Uh, again, it started off with the with the cotton field spirituals, gospel, grew into Dixieland in the New Orleans area. That was what we refer to Dixieland or traditional jazz. Uh, people like Louis Armstrong began that, and, and the feel for swing began there. Then it branched out into, into areas on the East Coast, like New York City and the like, in the West Coast. Uh, improvisational forms. Some of, some of the typical instrumentation, uh, most all jazz bands are consist, consist of a rhythm section, which consists of a, obviously a drummer to help keep time and uh -huh. the feel. Uh, a bass player, which also helps keep time, but provides the root or the foundation from which our stories are built. And then a chordal instrument, such as a piano or a guitar, or if you're real lucky, you get both. Now, when you say bass, a lot of these kids are going to think bass guitar, but that's not what you're talking about. Well, it, later years, yeah, electric bass guitar has been used and but, is used. But, but we're talking about like the big bass. All right, right? at the beginnings of time, electricity was kind of expensive. <laughs> So uh, we had the contrabass or the upright bass, which is, you know, a big bass that you see in orchestras, okay? Um, and, so, and, and typically that's, you know, the, the, the connoisseurs, if you will, of musicians that are trying to keep that acoustic sound will, will choose the acoustic bass over the electric because of the sound qualities of it. Now, um, you mentioned New Orleans. Isn't that kind of the center for jazz or as we consider? Well... That might have been where a lot of the new, new, back in the 20s, <laughs> uh, 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 foundation of the jazz idiom began, you know, in New Orleans. But the innovators, you know, such as Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker's group that began, you know, bebop and before their time, Lester Young's and those that really expanded upon the Dixieland were on the East Coast, more, you know, like New York, Midwest even. I mean, uh, Charlie Parker came from Kansas City, and, and Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie were famous for beginning what we call the bebop era, okay, because the, the syncopated rhythms that they played have a sound of a bebop, you know, uh, and, and, and then out of that later, Miles Davis's group came along, late 50s, early 60s, with an album called Kind of Blue, which most jazz historians call that to be birth of the blue or of the blue era, the cool era in jazz, with innovators such as John Coltrane and, and Cannonball Adderley and those type, and of course Miles himself. That was New York based, East Coast, uh, a lot of West Coast stuff too. So different forms, you know, Dixieland has a, its own kind of style, and uh, a more freer or what was termed then modern jazz style. Uh, 
develop more in the in the bigger cities such as New York and, and Los Angeles. Now you talk a lot. Of, you mentioned a lot of names here, but one of the things we, <clears throat> a lot of people think you know a jazz combo and it's a bunch of guys playing saxes and so forth. But one of the things we wanted to bring out was some of the women in jazz. Especially because we have a jazz player right here with us now. And well, if you could tell us some of the yeah, more I think popular women uh, jazz I musicians. I think anyone that's familiar with uh, uh, jazz knows the name Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Billie Holiday. <coughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. Billie voice. Holiday was a main contributor and innovator in, in, in vocal styles. Uh, can't, a pianist that, you know, people who, who follow jazz know very well, Mary McPartland. Um, um, Lena Horne, uh, Nancy Wilson, um, the list could go on. Oh, yes, I'm sure Irene could. Kral. <laughs> now, uh, we want to talk about some of the different types, and, and we're going to ask you to explain a little bit about the blues, blue notes, and the blue scales, and then we're going to have a demonstration on the piano after you tell us a little bit about it. Okay, well, as I said earlier, the root, the foundations of jazz came from the spirituals, which moved into blues, okay? Blue, feeling blue, yeah. <laughs> tends to make you think about darkness or sadness a little bit, a little bit of misery in your life. Um, and to get that sound musically, what we do is lower notes, okay? If you flat a note, lower it, it tends to give it a darker sound, sadder sound. So the blues scale, one of, you know, one of the traditional things or the, the most outstanding thing that makes it blues is by lowering the thirds, the fifths, and the sevenths off of, say, a major scale. Gives you that blues sound. Um, it was the favorite scale if, to use to pick your melody lines to tell your story in, in early blues days. Do you want to introduce our piano players? Are going to show us a little bit of the uh, blues? <coughs> sure. Ronnell Johnson, uh, would you like to play a, a few blues, a few uh, bars of a blues and also play a, a demonstration of what a blues scale is. I keep hearing music like that and drinking this coffee, I'm not going to be able to stand in this chair for long. I have to be moving around. <laughs> you now, another thing we want to discuss was shuffle and swing rhythms. And tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll have another demonstration. Okay. Uh, swing came about, I guess, the person who was really credited with being the first to do the swing thing was Louis Armstrong, what we call lazy eighth notes. You know, instead of a straight eighth note, like a clock goes tick tock. Tick tock. Mm -hmm. what, they, what they started doing to get a little bit more syncopated, a little bit more bouncy feel to the music was delaying that last note a little bit. So instead of your tick tock, tick tock, you get a da, 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 da kind of thing. Okay? Now, swing and shuffle are very closely related because they use that lazy eighth note feel. Uh, I guess the biggest difference would be. Uh, jazz musicians, when we're playing swing, talk about the backbeat. You know, four, four bar, two, and four are our heavy beats. Swing accents that a little bit more than shuffle. Shuffle's going to accent it more on the upbeat of each beat. Okay, so swing's more like ch 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 ch, and shuffle's like da 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 da. da. So you get, you know, you get the backbeat feel, but it's squeezed into each beat a little. And uh, we're going to have Dennis, I think, demonstrate that a little bit. Sure. Yeah. You want to go ahead and introduce Dennis? Yeah, sure. This is Dennis. Uh